Tonight, we're going to talk about infinity as viewed by mathematicians. It'll be accessible, I think, to anyone. Let's begin with the idea of counting. Let's suppose we have three apples. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, we write the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, however many we need. And then we pair off the apples. One apple goes with the number one, one apple goes with the number two, one apple goes with the number three. We run out of apples and we're at the number three, so there's three apples. Now, we don't skip numbers. So we don't pair off with one, two, skip three, and then pair off with four and say there's four apples. And also we don't give two apples the one number. Like we could pair off one apple with number one, but then the remaining apples with number two. So we don't say there's two apples or four apples. We say there's three apples because each apple has one and only one number and each number has one and only one apple. And there's no gaps. This is what's called a one to one correspondence. Now, you don't need anything more than that idea to talk about infinity, at least the first type of infinity, which is called countable infinity. So let's suppose we have all the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so infinity. So we have what we'll call Aleph null, number of numbers. Uh, we're not using the normal infinity sign because we saved that for a more infinite kind of infinity, if you can believe that. We'll get to that later. So we have Aleph null numbers, and here they are, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Now, how many even numbers do we have? You might say Aleph null over two, divided by two, I mean. Well, we can pair off the numbers and the even numbers. One goes with two, two goes with four, three goes with six, four goes with eight, and we never run out. We have a one to one correspondence, which would say there's as many even numbers as there are numbers. That doesn't seem to make sense. I believe I read once that Galileo had that thought that there are as many even numbers as numbers, and it bothered him. He didn't know what to make of it. But simple logic, we can pair them off, a one-to-one -one correspondence. And to support the idea that there's the same amount of even numbers as numbers, imagine you had a person and on their chest was the number one and on their back was the number two. You had another person on their chest was the number two and on their back was the number four, etc. So when the people are facing you, you see one, two, three, four, five, but if they turn around, you see two, four, six, eight, ten. But we haven't increased the number of persons and we haven't decreased the number of persons. So there must be as many even numbers as there are numbers. This seems strange. But the world is a strange place. Right now, way, way, way below my feet on the other side of the earth, people are hanging upside down. Oceans are hanging upside down. But the universe is just stranger than we know. So we've talked about infinity or the infinitely large. Let's go now to the infinitely small. This is a thought experiment. I am uh, one unit from a door, one meter, one yard, whatever. And I go halfway towards the door. So now I'm one half of a unit away from the door. Now I go halfway of the remaining distance. Now I'm one fourth of a unit away from the door. Now I go half of the remaining distance, I'm one eighth of a unit away from the door. And I continue. I continue. And eventually, I'm as close as you'd like to that door. I never reach the door, but I get closer and closer. Now, this is a thought experiment. In the physical universe, I believe it's thought 
that the Planck length is the smallest possible length. I can't explain that, but it doesn't matter. That's physics. This is just a thought experiment. So we can go to the infinitely small by this process. We can get, we can approach a number that's smaller than any number you can name. In math, this is called convergence. The idea of getting closer and closer and closer, but not necessarily reaching the target. So for instance, if we take a number like one and we have it, we get one half, and we have it again, we get one fourth, and we have it again, we get one eighth, just as I did with the door. That number is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. We say it converges to zero. It never actually reaches zero, but it gets as close to zero as we like if we just wait long enough. If we consider this process as happening in time, let's suppose we have the number every second. Then after a certain amount of seconds, we can calculate how close we are to zero, but we're never at zero. That's the idea of convergence. Lastly, in calculus, we have the idea of a limit, which I'll just mention for anyone who cares. And the idea of a limit, it gives students a lot of trouble, but if you understand convergence, the idea of a limit is trivial. Let's suppose X, let's call it X, is converging to two. It's getting closer and closer to two. It's at one, it's at one and a half, it's at one and three fourths, it's at one and seven eighths, it's at one and 15 sixteenths, et cetera. It's getting closer and closer to two. Well, if we have a function of f, x, let's call it f of x equals seven x, then as x converges to two, f of x converges to 14. So we say 14 is the limit. Well, this has just been a short note about types of infinity. I do want to mention before I leave that Aleph null infinity is called countable infinity because we can count. We can go from one number to the next, although we never reach an end. We can go from one number to the next. There is a more infinite kind of infinity, the so-called real numbers where you can't go from one number to the next because there is no next number. In other words, the number after one is not 1.01, it's not 1.001, and it's not 1.0000000001, and it's just you can't get to the next number. There is no next number. And that kind of infinity is uh, called an uncountable infinity. And if you want to see more, you can look up the mathematician Cantor, C-A-N-T-O-R. And he was the one who originated this uh, discovery about infinity. And you can re read about the Cantor diagonalization argument if you want to see how there's a type of infinity even more infinite than countable infinity. Okay, so that was just a short, I hope, entertaining note about infinity. Thank you.